Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's your reluctant gringo back again with another video. And this morning, we got the second trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine, and it does not disappoint. There are some spoilers in this video, along with some theories, so just a caution to anyone watching this. And yes, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that we placed all our bets on Cassandra Nova being the main villain of this film. And not only did we get a first look at her and her hideout, which we'll get into, but we also got a first look at her power set. But like I said, we'll get into that in a second. The trailer, which is hilariously set to Madonna's Like a Prayer, starts out with a callback to the original introduction of Wolverine in the first X-Men film released in 2000. It looks very similar to the same bar where the bartender called Logan a freak and where he and Rogue first met. But we quickly find out that this is an older Logan, an old man Logan, as Deadpool shows up and tries to recruit him unsuccessfully. Things get quickly out of control and our first hint that this is a broken Wolverine is given to us as Logan leans into Deadpool's gun with a smile and eyes filled with tears. We then get a montage of Wolverine and Deadpool squaring off in a waste world, what could be the void at the end of time from Loki, or another universe where Cassandra Nova is just decimated and taken over. Remember, Cassandra Nova is a complete psychopath and bent on killing as many mutants as she can, at least those who do not side with her. For more on Cassandra Nova, I'll leave a link in the description to the video I did on her comic book origins and you will see how how she's not only in this film, but how her story and possible appearance in the current X-Men 97 animated series is still in play. We then get shots of past characters who've either died or been left behind from Deadpool 1 and 2. As well, we get a quick shot of Wolverine, a seemingly younger looking version, falling to his knees in a field of grass. And this could be part of a flashback of his world where everyone he cared about died, where he failed to be able to do the right thing as a hero. Now, I didn't recognize this world, so if you do, please leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. We then get a shot of Mr. Paradox explaining to Wade that the Logan he's found is not a hero and that he actually failed his world. After that, we do finally get Wolverine and Deadpool in action together, and Logan delivers what can only be described as a very painful looking low blow to Wade. I definitely winced. I know probably every man in, in the world who's viewed this has probably winced at the headshot. The look of Wolverine, now let's face it, is, is awesome. I, I, you really can't complain about the, the costume and how Hugh looks in this. At his age, to be able to get in the kind of shape that he's in, it's just nothing short of impressive. And what's interesting here in this trailer, it looks as if Deadpool has to reconnect Wolverine to his roots as an X-Man, that Wolverine sort of has a confidence issue or is just depressed due to the events that happened in his world. And in a lot of ways, Wade, or Deadpool, has to fulfill the role that Professor X would fulfill in previous films. And I think that offers a very interesting dynamic to the relationship they're trying to build between Deadpool and Wolverine. I think it'll deliver a lot of tension. I also think it'll deliver a lot of comedy. We also get a shot of Deadpool walking with Wolverine. Notice the gold guns that Deadpool is holding. Is this a callback to Goldpool from the one-shot Contest of Champions comic book? I don't know, but I know in the beginning of the trailer, his guns were not gold, and now he has gold-bladed guns. And it's the only thing I can think of. It's just definitely something that stood out in that shot. Now, this is when the trailer really kicks in, and we get our first real look at Cassandra Nova, who is literally coming out of a giant skull later to be revealed as the corpse of Ant-Man in giant form. She's absolutely comic book accurate in costume. We get additional action shots of our two heroes and a big reveal that Eliath will be in this film, the Tempest creature who also resides in the void at the end of time from the Loki series, which really begs the question, is Tom Hiddleston going to make an appearance? I mean, talk about emptying the cupboard at that point and giving fans what they really want. And if you notice, when Cassandra comes down the open jaw of a dead Ant-Man, you can see some of our cameos. An older Pyro from X-Men 2 and X-Men 3, Azazel from X-Men First Class, what looks like Vanessa, but maybe the copycat mutant version of Vanessa, Todd Park's Toad from X-Men 2000, Lady Deathstrike, and that is what I was able to make out. A lot of the the faces are covered or they're just too out of focus to get a definitive look. One even looks like Valkyrie, but I don't think this is who that is. But that's the beauty of this film. It's how everything is just going to get mashed together and you never know who's going to show up yet. Definitely we're going to get Electra. I mean, that's confirmed. So that'll be interesting to see what else and who else they're going to be pulling into this film. Now, we get a lot more action sequences with Deadpool providing a voiceover, a first look finally at Cassandra Nova's telekinesis. Remember, she's an alpha level threat, one of the more powerful villains in the X-Men universe. The trailer gives off a little bit of a Mad Max vibe, which really sets the tone that this film is going to be very different from the vibrant color palette of typical MCU films. It's really setting itself apart, I think, in a lot of ways, not just in action, tone, dialogue, using curse words and things like that, but just everything even down to the color palette, which is really interesting to see. It's kind of exciting, you know, it's something different, you know, and I think that's what all fans are really looking for. As the trailer comes to an end, 
we get a final reveal of Deadpool and Wolverine jumping into what looks like a portal that Doctor Strange would open up. It really begs the question, is Doctor Strange going to be making an appearance? Or Wong? Or does this put the Scarlet Witch back into play? What magic users are going to be in this film? And where exactly is this portal going to be taking Deadpool and Wolverine? Are they coming to 616? Are they going to 818, 838? Wherever they might be going, I mean, it just really opens up every possibility. And in typical Ryan Reynolds fashion, we do end the trailer with Big Al and Wade talking about cocaine and Kevin Feige. This is nothing short of Ryan Reynolds telling the fans that he's in control, not the powers that be at Disney. It is absolutely hilarious and really ends the trailer with such a great feeling for the fans. So yes, this trailer looks incredible. The film looks incredible. This could be the biggest release of 2024, or dare I say, bigger than anything that we've seen in the last three or four years. This gringo is it. I'm hooked, and July can't come fast enough. And that's my breakdown and that's what I think. And of course, that's my opinion. I could be right. I could be wrong. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, let me know, did you like the trailer? Did it make you want to see the movie even more? Did it did it up the hype for you? What Easter eggs did I miss? What Easter eggs did you see? What did you notice? What are your theories? So let's just get it all out on the table because that's the beauty of this film is keeping everybody guessing and getting the fans involved in a way that I think other MCU films haven't been able to do in the past few years. And with that, like I said, click on the thumbnail for an explanation of who Cassandra Nova really is. And remember, I am still your reluctant gringo. And from south of the border, salute and I'll wave off.